All right, I'm here with Randy Wassinger, who is the founder and CEO of CryptoSlam. And um, you guys are a leading provider of data and transparency for the NFT industry. Um, for some of our readers who might not be so familiar with the NFT and like cryptocurrency industry, tell us a little bit about how CryptoSlam works. What we do is we track what is uh, scattered all about on the blockchain and we do our best to aggregate it, um, put it all together uh, and, and tell, I guess, stories with, with the data in, in a way that you, you couldn't do without, uh, yeah, organizing it and um, listening to the industry and knowing, I guess, what, uh, what insights people want to get out of it. Okay, and you guys had um, the end of 2021, beginning of 2022, you guys had a, a huge strategic seed funding round of $9 million. You had some investments from Mark Cuban, from LinkedIn founders. And um, so how did that kind of start off your 2020 year? Like, what did you guys, were you able to use that funding for? Like, how did that start your momentum for 2022? Yeah, we've certainly put it to good use at the time. Our team would have consisted maybe of uh, a little over a dozen people. And what we did was we put that directly into um, infrastructure from, an, from a human resource perspective, as well as from a, uh, an IT perspective. As, as you might imagine, when you, when you track pretty much every data point on every blockchain, it's, and as it's grown, it, it's become a lot more, I guess, uh, costly to store that, track it, and, and organize it. So the, the strategic seed round certainly helped with that. And uh, yeah, we've, uh, we've definitely put it to good use. And um, how does it feel to get like funding from people like Mark Cuban and that kind of thing? What kind of validation does that provide for what you guys are doing? Yeah, it, it was really cool. We actually got Mark Cuban early on. He was a, an angel investor. So the very first investor in Crypto Slam, besides myself, because I, I bootstrapped for a, a couple years. And uh, that was really neat because I didn't have to pitch him. He he literally offered uh, because he was in he was a crypto slam user mm -hmm. when the NFT industry really started to take off in January of 2021. An NBA Top Shot was a big was a big project and, and still is to this day. But uh, the as as he was looking to see what his how his Dallas Mavericks were were mm -hmm. doing on the blockchain, there's there at the time there was one place to go to get that. And it was crypto slam so so yeah so that was really cool uh, having him him reach out it was it was on on twitter uh can't remember which chiefs game it was but my wife and i were watching a, a chiefs game and i checked twitter and uh that uh, that started everything and so uh he was an angel investor he brought in a a couple uh a couple um key investors with him, including Sound Ventures, which is uh, Guy Osiri and Ashton Kutcher. They came in um, uh, along with a couple local investors and uh, Jay Rosenzweig as, as angels. And then it started all over again in uh, in the fall of 2021. That's when I met Yatsu with Animoca Brands. And similarly, I didn't really have to pitch him too much because he was already a Crypto Slam user. Mm -hmm. One of uh, one of Animoca's big investments was and continues to be Sky Mavis, which uh, produced Axie Infinity, and I, I think that's what led him to us because at the time we were the we were the only the only place doing a good job of telling that story of how um, how big of an impact Axie Infinity was was having on certain groups of people around the world. So that brought him to us, and then uh, just really opened up the door for everybody that came along with it, like. Uh, like Reed Hoffman uh, with LinkedIn, as you mentioned, and, and plenty of others to fill out the round. Yeah. And how do you plan to carry on that momentum into 2023? What should we expect from Crypto Slam this next year? Well, the industry certainly changed. As you might know, the bubble has burst a bit, if not uh, a lot, in the industry here in 2022. And so now, whereas it, it was everything was flying high for the longest time and we were drinking through a fire hose just trying to keep up. It's a lot different now. And honestly, it's it's a lot different in a good way because us as, a, as an infrastructure provider, we can really focus on laying 
the groundwork for what's to come without having to keep up with the, the hot flavor of the day, which may only be hot for two weeks or e even, even two days. So uh, what we expect to do is to be super strategic and be opportunistic during this time when the market's definitely taken a downturn and a lot of the, what I'd call junk is, is being flushed out. Mm -hmm. And I think we'll be left with the, the more valuable, uh, the more valuable innovations in, in the industry. And I just can't wait to see what, uh, what people come up with next. I do know, I do know that we'll be there to track the data and to, I guess, tell the story of all the fun stuff that's coming out. And my last question is, what does it um, feel like to be named one of the startups to watch? Yeah, it's 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 super cool. It's um, we are a global company for sure. There's uh, team members all around the world, but I am insanely proud to plant our flag here in Kansas City and in, in the Midwest and, and say this this cool uh, um, this cool industry and this early I guess I'd call it a really cool company. It started right here in, in Kansas City, uh, actually in, in Overland Park is, is where I'm from. So it, it's it's really cool, I guess, to be validated and um, be recognized uh, amongst yeah, all kinds of other exciting uh, ideas that are, that are popping up here uh, locally. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for having me on.